in class, let's see how this makes the um, question demo code better, right? Let's see what the improvement is. So the purpose of this is to get rid of all this code where we're like duplicating ourselves. I want to leave it here for reference because I think it's an important part of our notes, but let's comment it out. Each block of code here where we're just doing uh, displaying the prompt and asking the student for their answer, we can comment all that out. And then, so the code that's left is the code to create the fill-in question, the code to create and configure the choice question. So now let's take advantage of this new exam class that we just wrote by making a variable exam of type exam. And we're going to say equals new exam. That will create the exam. And we have to add each question to it. So we do that with the add question method. And we pass along Q, uh, which refers to the first question we made here, the inventor of Java question. And then we can say add question, and we can type Q2. And that refers to the who founded Apple question. And if we had more questions, we just keep calling add question. But when we're all said and done, and for now we're done, we'll just say exam.ask questions. So compile this and run it and verify that it still works. Because we certainly got rid of a bunch of code, which was nice. I'm going to run it too. Oh, on Gosling. But Steve Jobs is true. There we go. So it does work. At first glance, this might look like our typical use of like decomposition and creating a class to get some code resource and end up with cleaner, better organized code. But there's fundamentally something much more powerful going on. And that's what I want to focus on. One way to focus on this is to look at, well, let's first look at the exam class we wrote. As we look at this class, we never referenced fill in question or choice question anywhere. And if we look at the BlueJ project window, where BlueJ takes care of creating these like arrows for us, oops, we can see that the exam class depends upon the question class, right? We have this aggregation um, relationship. But notice there's no arrow from exam to choice question or fill-in question. They're completely what we call decoupled. And yet, despite the fact that we never referenced choice question or fill-in question, when we ran our code, clearly we saw the behavior of those subclasses, right? Because with fill-in question here, the answer got extracted from the question text and a blank was inserted. And here for the, the choice question, we actually got to see all of the choices, um, which wouldn't normally happen with a question. And this is, this is really why we care about inheritance. And this is why it's such a powerful cornerstone of object-oriented design. And the principles that make this possible are the ones we focused on the last couple of days. So let me just highlight those because it's, it's essential. When we, this add question method takes a single parameter of type question, okay? And so... Here, variable Q is of type question, and so like that's fine, but notice variable Q2 is not. Variable Q2 is of type choice question, right? We needed it to be of type choice question because we're calling this add choice method. But yet, Java is just fine with us passing Q2 in as a parameter because the choice question is a question. That's the substitution principle. We can substitute a variable of type choice question and its value 
for one of type question. Okay. So the substitution principle lets the exam class have a parameter of type question, even if the actual object referenced is of a subclass type. And imagine what, if this wasn't the case, if we didn't have inheritance, think what we'd have to do in this exam class. We would have to have a add fill-in question method and then add choice question method. And let's say we wanted another question type, add true false question method. And then we couldn't store them in an array list either, right? Because in an array list, we can only have all the elements have to be of the same type. So we would have to have an array list for our choice questions, an array list for our fill-in questions, an array list for our true false questions. It would become a nightmare. Every time we wanted a different question type, we would have to add all this code to our exam class. But we don't have to do that. And the substitution principle is one of the reasons why. The other part is the dynamic method invocation. That plays a huge role here. When we call the toString method on the variable Q here, the Java runtime does dynamic method invocation. It looks at the value of Q. It finds the object in the computer's memory. It says, hey, what class are you from? And when it responds choice question, it calls the toString method overridden in the choice question subclass. That's key for making all of this, all of this stuff work. Um, we, this, this behavior here is so important, we give it a special fancy name. And so what we call this is polymorphism, okay? Polymorphism, if you break it apart, is having multiple forms. And there's, there's two parts that make this up. It's the idea that we can operate on a reference to a superclass, so like a parameter, type could be of the superclass type like we have here with question but the actual um, behavior we exhibit is specialized based on the subclasses so this bullet here about operating on a reference to the superclass that's all about the substitution principle and the third bullet here about seeing the specialized behavior the specialized implementation that's the dynamic method invocation those two things together is what gives us this huge amount of extensibility. And it's, it's not just that it saves code and it promotes code reuse, it opens up things that would be totally impossible. So think about this, let's say going back to our class here, if we want to create a new type of question, if we wanna create a true false question, we could write a true false question class right now and we wouldn't even have to recompile the exam class. If we have the special behavior we have in the true false question would just work when we run our code. That's huge. Okay. We might not think so much about compiling stuff because it's just in the blue Jay window. Who cares? But what if we're a software company and we're shipping software, we could ship our exam class, package it up in Java. Our customers pay us for it. We ship it to them. They download it. And then if they wanted like a new question class, we could write a new true false question class and we wouldn't need to ship them a new version of the exam class because it would just work. That's what polymorphism gets us. It's huge.